your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice, ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for watching Kerfatu. Um, my name is Buba Gajigo, and uh, this is a special interview with, of course, um, one of the special people, a young Gambian who is doing, of course, um, 
exceptional in the country and is the she's the founder of uh, GAMI and Women Lives Matter because um, um, it's a social women rights group that are fighting to end uh, maternal deaths in this country and then uh, she's a young lady who is um, involved in so many things um, to help Gambians and of course some um, people around her so we welcome uh, Matida Bojang of course um, she's someone in the country who is known by so many people Matida welcome to Kilfada thank you um, we first talk about the Gambia women's life matter how did you come up with this initiative yeah um, so I started this um, in 2020 um, and I'm someone who has a very strong interest in just like women's health and women's rights stuff. Uh, I'm actually a medical student um, in the U.S. and uh, my goal is to go into um, essentially women's health. Um, and um, maternal mortality is something that I had been hearing about for a long time and I had done some research on it, but I didn't really know how, um, the magnitude of the issue. Um, so in 2020, um, earlier that year, I kind of was following, you know, a few Gambian pages on social media, like what's on Gambia, and I would see them post, you know, these things about women dying from things that were so preventable. And I thought to myself, why is this happening? And why isn't anyone talking about this? There needs to be more advocacy, more awareness. Um, so I decided to create a frame on Facebook. Um, and the next morning, I noticed that thousands of Gambians were using it. And as a result of that, we held a um, march in September of 2020. And um, that was organized by myself and my mom. Um, and uh, other gr uh, another group of women who also have the same um, passion for women's health. Um, so after that protest, um, a lot of people wanted to keep going and continue this advocacy and um, awareness campaign, if you will call we'll it. We'll talk about the protest. So yeah. um, you've make, you said you make a research about this. What did you find out about uh, maternal yeah. mortality um, before I, coming up with this initiative? Yeah, um, so I essentially found out that um, found out some of the contributing factors. So for example, postpartum hemorrhaging, which is essentially excessive blood loss, is the leading cause of death. Um, or it was at that time when I was doing my research. I think now it's been now it's hypertension. Um, but um, I found out things like that, and then I found out things like transportation is an issue, um, and just other factors that are so preventable. When I when I think about the maternal um, health crisis here, I compare it to the US where I am. And I think about the fact that none of those things are happening. For example, transportation isn't an issue over there for a lot of people. Um, so just basic things like that. And I thought to myself, you know, these things are very preventable. So why not do something about this? Um, and obviously, I'm just a student, so I can't really have a, much of a direct impact um, as far as what the outcome of, you know, these women giving birth will be. Um, but my job here is to, you know, do the best that I can to spread awareness about this and to essentially just educate women on um, you know, ways that they can decrease their chances of dying during childbirth. Um, when you did this research, of course, you find, some of, you find out some of these things and mm -hmm. then you, you come up to set up. Who did you contact? Who did you come to contact with before um, setting up this um, particular group? Yeah, um, my mom was very helpful um, in this entire process. She's always um, known that I've been very passionate about like women's health, women's rights, and things like that. Sure, yeah. um, and my goal actually, um, when I, my goal has always been when I graduate from medical school and I become a doctor in the U.S. that I'll come back here and give back to my community. And essentially my um, ultimate goal is to build some sort of like hospital. Um, and she's always known that. And she, when this whole thing was happening, she was like, why don't we actually start a nonprofit? So we actually started off by starting the Bama Care Foundation. Um, and we started that in like um, August. And then Gambian Women's Lives Matter happened in September. And so Mama very Care Foundation is different from the Gambian Women's Lives Matter. Essentially, um, but the way I view it is that um, Gambian Women's Lives Matter is essentially an arm of the Mama Care Foundation. Um, that we essentially had the same goals of you know reducing maternal mortality in Gambia, but with Mama Care we do a whole bunch of things. One of the first things that we did was fundraise for um, families in rural areas of Gambia that were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, um, and we want to do things around um, mental health. Um, education and just various other things. So that covers a wider range of things, whereas Gambian Women's Lives Matter um, focuses specifically on maternal and child um, mortality in Gambia. Um, so um, she's always known that I had this passion for women's health and um, you know women's rights, and she kind of pushed me to actually start it. Um, I'll give my mom a lot of credit for this organization. I think I, if it wasn't for I honestly don't think nothing would have happened. Um, as I said, um, this is more of like a social media movement and it really started when I saw things on social media and I was like, something has to be done about this. And she was kind of the force that uh, propelled me to start this organization. All right, interesting. 
Um, the, the, since you established this uh, movement, mm -hmm. is there any impact that you've seen that um, it has on Gambia? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we help out a lot. Um, people always come to us with their stories. Um, and the main thing that I will say we do is we help out with blood donations. Um, so when a woman is in labor, um, she or her husband or her, you know, another family member, or even sometimes a hospital, will contact us and ask us to find a donor for the, um, for the woman. And we'll post on our social media. And it's usually not too hard to find a donor. And we actually pay people to donate blood. And we also pay for their transportation if needed. Um, so I would say that that's the biggest impact. We help, I think, anywhere from like 12 to 20 women per month with that alone. Um, and in the um, uneventful circumstance that um, the infant does end up dying, um, or the, sorry, the mother ends up dying, we will open a fundraiser um, for the infant um, and, you know, fundraise for things like um, clothing, um, formula, milk, um, just basic things that they'll need in the first months of development. Um, so I think that we've definitely made a great impact um, on the Gambian community, um, not only here um, in Gambia, but also in the diaspora. Um, and the big thing that I really wanted to get out of starting that organization was to spread awareness. And I felt like I've done that. As I said, when I created the frame, I really wasn't expecting um, to gain that much attraction. Um, and tens of thousands of Gambians use that, felt, uh, use that frame. Um, literally every single Gambian uh, whose profile I go, go to, um, they've used that frame before. So um, I think that we are really making an impact. And as I said, my goal was to raise awareness. And I feel like I've done that. And I'll continue doing that. Interesting. Um, during this period, you've um, stayed to peaceful protests. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in one of them, you were calling the government to investigate um, mm -hmm. the maternal deaths in the country. Yeah. Do you think um, the government has answered to your calls? or um, uh, Do you achieve anything from this pro peaceful protest that, 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 that you have conducted? Yeah. Um, so I think the first one um, was kind of an eye-opening experience. Um, I remember after the first one, the Minister of Health said that he, he actually went on record and said that, you know, they would do an investigation into these deaths. As far as I know, um, nothing has been conducted, but again, I could be wrong. But as far as I know, no, no investigation has been conducted. Um, so I don't think that um, nothing has changed on the governmental level. Um, and, you know, our goal is, is to work with them. We're not against them. We're not we're not disparaging them or their image or anything on social media or during these protests. We want to work with them. We have to work with them um, to achieve our goals. Um, so our goal is that they would, our hope is that they would come to us. Um, we've been reaching out and, you know, we've had some unsuccessful attempts at getting, um, getting uh, at them um, responding back to us, but um, we're not against them and we want to work with them. Um, but as I said, I don't think that much change has happened on that level um, from what I know. Did you ever contact them since you started this initiative? I mean, from the minister, the people that are working with the ministry, uh, or any personnel from the government. Did yeah. you ever contact them to talk to them so that you can sit with them and uh, talk to them about the, 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 the maternal deaths in this country? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, we've done it several times, and we haven't really received much of a response um, from the individuals that we've reached out to. We've, we've specifically reached out to the Minister of Health. And we haven't really received anything back. Again, I think that a lot of things are not politicized. And you know, we've had some things going on where people thought we were a political organization. But I also want to re reiterate that we're not a political organization and that we do want to work with um, essentially any group or any organization that's willing to help and that has goals that align with ours. Um, but no, we've actually um, not had much of a success um, in terms of getting, um, getting any responses back from the people that we reached out to. Who particularly did you write to, 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 to me? Is it the minister or the, minister, or, or, or the people? Um, the minister specifically. Um, when we had our first um, march, um, we wrote an open letter. Um, and that's where you read all of the different um, things that we listed that we would like to um, see happen. And after that, I guess you can see that he responded because he said that you know, he would look into these things and you know, investigate these things and see what was going on. Um, but he specifically is the one that we reached out to. And I know that when my mom was here, um, she was here earlier this year, yeah. and she had tried reaching out again and um, wasn't very successful. Um, and again, I think that they have their own view of us and what they think our goals are. Um, and I, you know, for reasons best known to them, I don't know why they feel that way, um, but I completely understand it. Um, I think that we also started this during a very politically um, intense time, and you know, everything turns into politics. And you know, that isn't my goal. Anyone who knows me knows that. Um, I pretty much grew up in the U.S. and I didn't spend much time here and I barely honestly knew um, the people that were running. 
Um, so um, we definitely have no interest in that. And we have people from all religions, all po political parties, all tribes that are part of this organization. And our goal is to help reduce the maternal and infant mortality rates in Uganda. They accuse you of being a political group. The first day you, you hear it from the minister himself. How do you feel? Um, I knew that we weren't, um, but I also understood where he was coming from because one of our members um, did post something that you know was a bit alarming, and you know we had conversations about it, and we made sure that something like that wouldn't happen again. Um, so I completely understood um, where he was coming from, but again, I wanted to reiterate that we um, are not a political organization, and I was a bit disappointed that he was kind of you know spreading that um, around because he had never really spoken to any of us um, about what we do or anything like that, but. Um, I completely understood where he was coming from. At that time, one of our members, one of, one of our founding members, did say that uh, you know we supported a certain party, and we didn't. We actually cannot do that um, in the U.S. Do you think that cannot, changed, that changes everything? Um, I think it did. Um, I think that it made some people feel different about you know the people that we choose. Because at to the time, was, I've seen some other people changing their profiles from Gambian Women Lives Matter and changing it to another thing. Yeah, I saw it too. Um, and, you know, I personally released a statement um, to try to kind of rectify what was going on. As I said, if anyone who knows me personally knows that I have zero interest in politics and I don't support any political party here, to be quite frank with you. Um, and, um, you know, we tried our best to rectify the situation. And I think that now that they've seen the things that we, we're doing and now that they're seeing that we're actually not involved in politics, um, that, you know, people are actually kind of coming back um, is what I think is happening. Um, but I definitely saw what you saw too when it was happening and I was very disappointed. And, you know, that individual posted what they posted without, you know, consulting anyone else on the team and it was very disappointing um, that they did that. But, you know, we tried our best to rectify it and that's all we could do. What did you expect from the, from the ministry now? Now they perceive you as a, as, as a, a political group. Do right. you think they, they, they will do better to work with you people? Yeah, um, that's a very good question um, and a very hard one to answer. Um, I have never spoken to him myself. Um, you know, we've, we've written letters, we've done stuff, but again, we haven't really gotten a response back. Um, and I think that because of, you know, the, the incident that happened, um, he has an even more negative view of us. So I think that he will be even more resistant to work with us, um, which is very unfortunate. But, you know, as, as I said, we're going to continue spreading um, awareness about this issue um, with or without his help. And um, as I said, we do need them, but if they don't want to work with us, then that's fine. That's their right. Um, we can't force them to work with us. Um, and, you know, we'll continue doing what we're doing um, on social media. We'll continue doing our fundraisers for families that are impacted by maternal and infant mortality in Gambia. Um, and we'll continue doing our small things. It may not be that, you know, opening a women's hospital, you know, anytime soon sure. um, because we'll need their help for that. Right. Um, but, you know, we'll continue doing the little things that um, we, we do. Um, in hopes of you know improving things a little bit. And now you're in the Gambia. I know it's just for a very short time, but yeah. would you like to meet the minister to discuss with him or any other person um, that is involved in the Ministry of Health? Or have you taken any step to do this? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I would absolutely love to. I would absolutely love to have conversations about what's going on. As I said, my goal is to fight for women and young girls. Um, and um, if anyone has similar views, um, I'm happy to talk to them. As I said, most of them actually, I don't think really know me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very young and you know, a lot of people know my mom as you know, the person who's involved in this. Sure. And um, I think that if they actually talk to me and know the type of person that I am, their views might change a little bit. Um, he's a doctor, I'm studying to become a doctor. And you know, I think we have a lot in common. Um, so I would absolutely love to talk to him or you know, essentially anyone else in the government who can help us with our goals and achieving um, what we want to achieve. Um, I'm completely open to that. But again, is that going to happen? I don't know. Um, no, no attempts have been made um, since I've been here to reach out to them because I kind of just assumed honestly that they don't want anything to do with us. So um, no attempts have been made since I've been here. I'll so what that. are the other things that you're considering doing for uh, women in the country? Um, you talk about maternal deaths in the country. Most of the people blame government for it, but then um, people say there are so many contributing factors to this. Um, do you have any other means of helping them apart from um, blaming the government? Not, as other people are doing, I'm not saying you blame mm -hmm. the government, but many people are blaming them um, mm -hmm. because of the lack of uh, medicine in the, in, the, in, the, in the hospitals and blood and so on. Mm -hmm. But do you have any other plans apart from, um, of course, I'm just blaming the government? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, well, I will personally say that I don't blame the government um, fully. Um, I think that they do have some responsibility here um, as far as why some of these rates are high. But um, essentially, I think it comes down to several other things that kind of impact these things. But I think that if they can, you know, improve things like um, the infrastructure in hospitals, mm -hmm. provide more resources, essentially, I think all of this maternal um, and infant mortality things come down to lack of resources. That's kind of the common denominator in all of these things from the research that I did. Um, so they can they can help out in terms of um, bringing in more resources. Um, I went to a hospital um, three days ago and they were telling us that they didn't have an ultrasound machine. Um, and it is so important to have that. Um, for example, if a woman is having an ectopic pregnancy, uh, which is essentially when like the baby's growing outside of the uterus, which is where they're supposed to be growing, um, you know, they can detect things like that um, through you know, things like an ultrasound. Um, so if they can you know, provide those resources to these hospitals and supply them with um, doctors that are fully trained and are experts um, in these um, areas, then you know, things could change um, in that sense. But essentially, I think it comes down um, to an individual level. You have to kind of be, be responsible for your own health um, and go out and seek resources. So a big thing that we've been trying to do is more education um, around pregnancy. So you know, doing um, you know, more education around things that are some of the leading causes of death during maternal, um, during childbirth, um, things like um, hypertension, postpartum hemorrhaging. Um, preeclampsia um, and you know things like that um, so a big thing that um, I personally want to do and one of the things that I actually had planned to do when I came here was to just do education around pregnancy and ways that you can reduce your chances um, of reducing pregnancy because at the end of the uh, of reducing um, maternal death because at the end of the day your health is in your own hands um, but um, again we have been doing I don't know if you've heard about this one but um, we've been fundraising to buy an ambulance um, again, transportation was one of the things that I saw was an issue when I did my research um, on maternal um, mortality in Gambia. And um, if we can provide an ambulance um, or some sort of phone number um, that you know these women can call or their families can call whenever they have an emergency and take them to whatever clinic or hospital they'd like to go to, yeah. I think that that may also help. Um, and when I think about that, I think about one of my aunts who um, actually um, ended up um, passing away because she needed to be transported to a different hospital. Sure. And I think about how all of those things could be prevented had there been um, effective and a, had there been a more effective and a more robust um, transportation system in Gambia. Um, so that's something that we've been doing. And again, the biggest thing um, is blood. So blood is, a, there's a shortage of blood here. There's a shortage of blood in a lot of, part, in a lot of parts of the globe. Um, mm -hmm. Even in Wisconsin, we have a shortage of blood. Um, so we've been working with um, a few hospitals to try to set up some sort of blood bank. Um, we did try with some hospitals and you know, they said that they didn't have enough refrigerators to store blood, uh, but we've definitely been trying um, on our end to make sure that um, blood is no longer an issue. And again, that is something that is so preventable, um, is hemorrhaging, because if you have blood, you'll be fine for the most part. Before we talk about other things, I, I wanted to ask this. We, we, I know you've received so many cases um, mm -hmm. when it comes to maternal deaths. Which one is the most touching one? Um, that you've received? Yeah, oh, that's a very good question. Um, the one that I will say um, was the most touching was, it happened, it happened earlier this year, um, and this was a woman who had given birth to twins. And um, she was kind of asking um, the, again, I don't know if it was a midwife, um, a nurse, or a doctor, but you know, they all kind of say it's a doctor. Again, these are stories that we hear from families. We don't, we don't create these stories ourselves. And you know, I know some people have a hard time believing that you know, some of these thing, things are happening, but these are stories that families tell us, and we're going to believe those families. Um, but anyway, um, so apparently she had kind of been, this is essentially just a case of like medical negligence. And um, it essentially had to do with um, how the healthcare practitioners were speaking to her and how they were really just ignoring um, her pain and um, the things that she was expressing. Um, and she ended up passing away you know, a few days later. Um, and she left her twins behind. Yeah. And um, it was just a very sad situation. Um, I remember one of the things that their family member told us was that um, the doctor, again, they say doctor, I don't know if it was a doctor for the nurse or midwife, but again, they say doctor. Mm -hmm. um, they said um, that the doctor was essentially like, um, I forgot the exact wording, but they were essentially like, um, oh, geez, what was the word? Wording. Um, but they were essentially like, you know, if you don't like the care that they you're receiving here, yeah. you, can go any, you can go somewhere else. So just the attitude. Um, of those healthcare professional, professionals is just unacceptable. I think that another thing that people need to really practice is compassion. That's literally the first thing they teach us in medical school, where sure. I go to medical school, is compassion. You, these are humans that you're interacting with. And I think that because um, you know, doctors and other healthcare professionals sometimes were 
we're around death so much and we're around sick people all the time that you kind of become desensitized to certain things. I mean, I'm talking about even myself when I talk about this thing. I mean, I took anatomy lab um, last semester and I don't know if you know what a cadaver is, but it's essentially like a dead human body that we get to dissect. And the purpose of that is to learn. Um, if I want to be a surgeon, I need to learn what, the re what, what you look like inside, right? Um, so that's the purpose. But sometimes I'll notice myself just cutting things away, just cutting <laughs> at it. And I'm like, you realize this is a human. Like, this is someone that died, right? So I think it's easy to become desensitized. Even yeah, in the U.S., yeah. people say, oh, doctors have, like, no emotion. Like, they, you know, you know think I, people I, say I, things like that. Yeah. So um, compassion is so important, and it takes so little. Yeah, but from your experience, do you think we, we, we lack in this compassion in this country? Um, I think so. Literally, I will, I will say maybe like anywhere from like 30 to 50 percent of the families that we hear from, they all talk about how the nurses and just staff were just rude. Like that's all they talk about. And they talk about how they're just not good at their job. And I think that extending some grace and compassion would really change things. Again, even if it doesn't change the outcome, at least that family will not feel terrible for the way you talk to their family member that not passed away. Sure. So I wanted to ask this question before we move on there. Um, Another thing, mm -hmm. if you know how much money do you spend um, since you started this initiative, and I said you, I mean Gandhi Women's Life Month. Yeah, um, we have spent um, quite a bit of money. Um, we, I don't know an exact amount. That's a really good question. Um, that wasn't something that I prepared for. <laughs> um, but um, we did a fundraiser earlier this year, and we were able to raise a good amount of money. So we used that money to help out with things like, again, as I said, we pay people to donate blood. So we use um, that money mainly to help out with that. And again, if an infant um, is alive and their mother passed away, um, we'll also use some of that money to help and we'll open fundraisers um, on Facebook and um, other social media platforms to you know, fundraise. Um, but um, we use a lot of, um, I remember when this organization first started, it was really just me and my mom using our own money. When the whole um, march happened, my mom um, sponsored that. She took her own money to buy t-shirts, um, drinks, and you know, other things to make sure that that happened. But can you estimate, uh, can you estimate like, how many millions or thousands did at least you've spent on your um, life? But not millions, um, that's for sure. Uh, maybe somewhere in the hundreds, hundred thousands, um, but um, nowhere near millions. Again, that's, um, those are figures that I'll need to double check, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah that, that's not something that I know off the top of my head, sorry. All right, so tell us, um, um, the impacts that you have uh, um, since you've established Gambia Women's Life Matter, um, what are some of the impacts that you have uh, from, est from the, the day that you established to today? Yeah, um, I think that we've had a very great impact on just the Gambian community as a whole. Even people that are not Gambian are not aware of this issue. And again, as I said, my goal when I started this, I didn't even think this was going to be as big as it is now. My goal was to just spread awareness. I just asked everyone, I urged them to just change your profile picture to this, mm -hmm. to just raise awareness about this. I didn't know that this was going to be a big thing mm -hmm. that we now turned into yeah. an organization, mm -hmm. and now we help babies, now we help um, with blood donations. I didn't think it was going to be any of that. Um, so I think that um, the things that we're doing are great, and that a lot of people in the community are benefiting from them. Um, and I, I think through this, I've realized that social media is a very um, powerful tool. Um, for raising awareness and just carrying out essentially anything you want to do. We raise a good amount of money from even just our Facebook fundraisers. Um, so I think that we've had a very great impact on the Gambian community as a whole. Um, and I think that we've had the greatest impact on um, women um, as they are the ones that are most impacted by this issue. But you know, men are also impacted and families are. Um, so um, I think that they're impacted in ways that maybe I can't express yeah. Um, myself, but um, I even when you go through our um, social media, you'll see people's comments. You know, thank you for what you're doing. Um, thank you for doing this. You're amazing, and yada yada yada. Um, so you can really tell that um, a lot of people are impressed with what we're doing. I don't think that there's ever been anything like this um, in the past. I didn't really see too many people using social media to kind of bring change. Well, I've seen like some with like you know certain movements and stuff um, with you know Gambia has decided and you know all those kinds of things. Um, but this is something unique and this is something different and it relates to a health crisis. Um, and this was something that, you know, I think, I think almost every gamin that I've met either knows someone um, that has um, been impacted by maternal mortality sure. or they have a family member who's been impacted by it. So everyone has been impacted by it in some way, shape or form. And 
everyone I think is passionate about this issue and I think that's why it's so big because everyone has in, has been impacted by it or has heard a story about you know a woman dying during yeah. childbirth or something mm-hmm. um, but to answer your question I think that we uh, we've definitely had a great impact um, and I'm not sure how to measure that impact but uh, from what I've seen in social media I see that people are very grateful um, and I'm very happy that um, you know we've achieved what we've achieved so far what, so what is next for Gambia women's life matter yeah um, that's a great question um, as I said um, we would like to you know work with um, you know the Minister of Health mm-hmm. um, to figure out ways that we can reduce maternal mortality again this is an issue that is still persistent and the maternal mortality rates are only going up um, maybe the rate not, itself is not going up but we're again just hearing more cases the number of cases that we're hearing are not going down um, so um, there's still a lot to do um, and we will continue doing what we do on social media um, but again essentially our goal is to open and staff a um, women's um, clinic um, that's kind of our ultimate dream um, that's obviously not going to be an easy task and it will involve a lot of money and uh, we, we don't have that money mm-hmm. um, but essentially our goal is to just keep going mm-hmm. um, we a, a big thing that we want to do is to make sure that blood is not an issue here um, I know that um, there aren't too many they don't do like too many like blood drives here mm-hmm. um, in in the US you know they pay you to donate blood and you know things like that sure. um, so if we could really make that something that's um, something if we could do that here and make sure that it's consistent um, that's kind of my big goal and again the leading cause of death um, based on my research is um, hemorrhaging um, so that's something that's preventable if there is enough blood um, so that's definitely a big thing from the medical side um, that I would like to work on and make sure that that's something that um, is no longer a problem um, or at least the problem is, a, is lessened a little bit um, and again as I said we're working on our ambulance um, project um, we've, we've been fundraising and people have been donating which we're very thankful for. But they have not started buying them yet? No because we're still raising money. money. Um, again these things are not cheap so. Yeah, <laughs> we, that's true. yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, so so those are some of the key things that we're doing and will continue doing. Um, but again, we have this big goal of um, opening and staffing a women's health clinic, and we need help from individuals, um, governmental and agencies. And you've also started raising those funds for the clinic? Um, no, not that yet. Not, <coughs> not yet. yet. Mm-hmm. That's not an idea. Yeah, All that's right. a bigger project. Right. Interesting for Gambia Women Lives Matter. You've talked about um, Mama Care Foundation, and mm-hmm. so many people confuse this too. Yeah. W- what are the difference? Yeah, um, I, I kind of explained earlier, but Mama Care was something that um, I started before I started Gambia Women Lives Matter, and I started that was with it, it's essentially just a charity um, that helps in any way. So the main goal is to help women and girls. Um, we promote things like menstrual equity maternal um, education, mental health education. Um, We fight um, food scarcity um, and food insecurity um, and just various other things. Again, it's a bigger, it covers a wider range of things, whereas Gambit Women's Lives Matters um, focuses specifically on maternal and infant mortality. Um, But they're very similar and um, I consider Gambit Women's Lives Matter to be an arm of the Mama Care Foundation. Um, The Mama Care Foundation is a 501 um, uh, C3 um, in the U.S., which means that um, it's a registered nonprofit, and essentially I can use that to you know apply for grants and other things. Um, whereas Gambia Women's Lives Matter is registered here, Mama Care is also registered here um, as a nonprofit. So um, again, they're very similar um, with similar goals, um, but Gambia Women's Lives Matter was just a, it was essentially just like a hashtag that kind of became a big deal, and uh, we didn't want to we didn't want to make it we didn't want to join make it. We didn't want to um, change Gambit Women's Lives Matter and you know try to fit um, the Mama Care Foundation, so we decided to keep it as two separate things. But they're essentially the same thing. more of the same thing. But, yeah. Uh, how's your experience more. working with them? I understand that you donate some clinics and uh, mm-hmm. uh, hospitals in the country. You give them uh, medical equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your experience with them? Are they open to you in providing these materials? Yeah, um, I've seen that the hospitals that we've worked with so far have been very open to you know working with us. Um, when I when my mom was here, she went to another hospital, and again they donated some medical equipment, um, and you know kind of talked to the hospitals about what their needs are. Um, one of the hospitals told us that you know they need blood. Um, again, blood is in he- yeah, a huge blood issue. Blood is a problem. In the country. Yeah, I don't know. exactly. Yeah. Um, so they've been very open um, about working with us. So far, the ones that we've reached out to, we have a very close relationship with Old um, Jeshwang mm-hmm. um, Hospital um, and, sorry, um, Health Center. 
Um, and, um, you know, they've been very open about working with us. And, you know, we've been trying our best to help. And um, again, I think that hospitals here could always use some medical equipment. So um, and it's usually very nice people, very nice donors that will reach out to us and be like, hey, I have this medical equipment that I'd like to donate. Sure. Um, what can I, you know, who can I talk to to get the, to, you know, get this to the proper people? So um, we're always happy to work with them. And the hospitals have been very nice, the ones that I've interacted with, at least. Interesting. So what is the latest about Bama Care? What is the what? The latest that you are doing about Mama Care Foundation. Um, so in Mama Care, um, we do a lot of, we've been doing a lot of menstrual equity um, promotion. Um, I, how many days, it was yesterday actually, um, I went to go to um, senior secondary school and we provided over 100 girls um, there with um, pads. Um, so that's kind of been the focus of that um, organization. And as I said in the past, we've done thing, um, fundraising for COVID. Yeah. Um, we've also helped out with fundraising. fundraising yes, um, I think I've covered some Gambin. of them. Yeah. yeah, we've also done some fundraising for Gambin Women's Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, that's something, again, that's a bigger thing that focuses on kind of everything. Um, so whenever, we, we try to help there whenever we can. But um, I will say that Gambin Women's Lives Matter is the more popular thing. And um, it's the... I, was, I don't want to say it's a priority um, over in Bamar Care because as I said, they're literally like <laughs> so, the it's it. so it's so hard to distinguish them. Yeah. Um, but um, but both of them are important, and um, you know I feel like most people know um, Gambin Women's Lives Matter more, no, no. Um, and therefore they donate to more of the causes that are related to that. Um, so but yeah, but with Mama Care we've been doing a lot of um, promoting menstrual equity and to make sure that. Um, you know, periods aren't preventing girls from achieving their education. Right, uh, that's interesting. Um, C is, of course, um, uh, Matida Bojan. She's the founder of uh, um, Gambia Women's Life Matter and, of course, um, Bamakia Foundation. Um, apart from this two, um, mm -hmm. what other projects are you involved in? Am I involved in, in, in my life just in general? Um, so I'm a student <laughs> um, and I'm very busy. Um, so these are the main things that I do. Um, I, I am I'm planning on doing some global health research um, through my medical school um, back in the U.S. this summer. Um, so I'll kind of I'm and my and my hope through that is to do more research into maternal mortality. And it may not be Gambia specifically, um, but it's just do an in-depth um, research into some of the causes and just look at how different um, health systems throughout the world kind of tackle this issue. And maybe that's something that I could maybe use the results of that issue to and apply it to some of the work that we're doing and um, maybe even present my results to the Minister of Health, who knows? <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> All right. So I think we have a very little time to uh, um, wrap up. Um, if I had not asked any question that you want to talk about, you can, you can go ahead. On it. Um, uh, not really. Um, I will say that I encourage people to you know, make a donation to um, any of our fundraisers um, that we open. Um, you'll see them on our Gambin Women's Lives Matter um, Facebook page. You'll see them on my mom, Bali Chams page. You'll see them on my page, Mati yeah. Boya. So um, please donate and you know, continue to spread the word and amplify um, our voices and the voices of the women who have passed away. All right. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, that was uh, Mati Boya. She's the founder uh, of Gambia Women's Life Matter and also uh, Bama Care Foundation. Um, uh, these are, of course, some um, uh, initiatives that she did in the country and then is helping a lot of a whole lot of Gambians um, here. We thank you very much. Um, this was a very special interview, um, actually, because um, she's a young Gambian doing a whole lot of things for the country. Um, so we will say thank you very much, and then thank you for coming to Kerfado. We've been waiting for this moment for a long time because I know um, so many Gambians would have uh, definitely would have want to listen to you, and they were, of course, I'm waiting to listen to you and they want to hear from you. So this is a very important um, interview. We thank you very much for coming, and we commend you for um, what you are doing for your country. So thank you very much. I was your host, Buba Gajiva. Bye-bye.
We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential 
to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.